Hello there, Ray here, and today guys, I have a really unique farm. This is an automatic blaze farm that uses a new mechanic that came out in 1.14, which is the ability to get XP's as well as loot from the blazes just by using these splash water bottles. A couple of snapshots ago, they fixed a bug that I have been trying to get them to fix for quite a while, and this is a bug that when a blaze would be killed by a water bottle thrown by a player, it would not allow that blaze to drop its player unique loot. So when the player kills a blaze, only then will it drop blaze rods as well as XP's. If you just have them like completely crushed to death, then they won't drop anything. So I was really excited to see this bug fix. And then we went ahead on stream, we designed up this blaze farm here. And this farm here will allow the player to AFK and automatically throw water bottles at the blazes, getting blaze rods as well as XP's. Now a unique property of both Endermen as well as Blazes, if they come in contact with water, they will take damage. So if I drop an Enderman into this water, it'll take damage and teleport away. And same thing if I drop this Blaze into the water, it'll take damage. A few versions ago, they made it so that Splash Water Bottles will also do damage to both Endermen as well as Blazes. Since these bottles have water on them, and they kind of have that new thing where they can put out fires, so if you throw a Splash Water Bottle on fires, it can uh, put the fire out if it's a direct shot. But only recently did they actually make it so that when these mobs are killed by that, will you get the proper loot from them. The way that this farm works is it uses a blaze spawner, which you can find in nether fortresses. Then the blazes just spawn because the player will be nearby. Then they fall down to the ground. And then from here, they're able to pathfind and think they can go through these trap doors. So they're going to try to walk through these trap doors and I think they can also walk on here and walk all the way over there to the land around them. This is a really cool trick that Redstone Jazz showed about five years ago. And it's a really nice way to get mobs to automatically pathfind over and fall down a hole. So you can see once they fall down this hole, they're kind of held in this chamber here. And then when their time is ready, it will allow them to fall further down into a crushing system. So now you see they got released and now they're in a second stage. Here is the crush right here, and there is a little clock over here. And this clock will allow it so that they will get crushed a very precise time, allowing them to be exactly one heart. So you can see them getting crushed right now. And once it releases them, they will fall downwards into this holding chamber here, and then they will get pushed over into the rest of the blazes over here. This is to avoid max cramming, as ever since 1.9, if too many mobs are in the same area, they will take damage, and since the blades are only one heart, they could easily kill themselves off from the entity cramming. So the way that we get around this is that we have a vine in here, and the vine will allow it so that they will not think that they can take max cramming. Now you can also use a ladder, but the problem is both ladders and vines, mobs will try to climb up them, and that's why the mobs are falling to the side and then getting pushed in and kind of being held in place by this piston over here. Now the whole time the player will be AFKing over in this chamber over here, and right here is where you just leave your player AFKing. And you'd have a free hand just sitting here holding right click. And what will happen is the blazes will automatically come down, getting crushed, and be set there in front of the player ready to be killed. And after so many blazes come down, there's a little counting system over here, which will eventually activate and it will drop a splash water bottle down to the player. And once it comes down, the player will be able to pick it up. And since you're already holding right click down, you will automatically throw the potion towards the blazes. This will allow you to get all the XP's from them since they fixed that bug as well as get the blaze rod loot. And that's what we got underneath here. We got a hopper minecart and some hoppers that are just picking up all the blaze rods into this chest here. What's really nice about this is that you don't even have to be here to whack at the blazes with your sword. And you can still get the XP's as well as the blaze rods. You just sit in here and AFK. Now the way that you have it so that your player will always hold down the right click button is that you first hold it down on your mouse. And then when you're holding it down, you press F3 plus T. And this is going to reload the resource packs, but also remember any buttons it had held down. So right now I'm not touching my mouse whatsoever, and you can see my guys automatically throwing those splash water bottles. And this way, whenever you're given a new splash water bottle, you'll automatically throw it. Now your player is also close enough to the blazes to pick up the XP's and that's what this little hole underneath here is to allow the XP's to go to the player. The redstone is all right up in here and it's just two different clocks. We got a clock that will crush them, we also got a clock that will determine when the player should get a water bottle. 
Now you can decide how many blazes you want to be inside this area before it will give you a water bottle. And that is done by using this hopper clock here. The system is relatively simple. As you can see, it's just mostly the spawner, the crusher, and the timer. But we also decided to add some more things onto it as we can actually make this a little bit more automatic since we can automatically get the splash water bottles. So the way we do that is pretty cool. So we got a little system here that is doing all that. So let's kind of follow it backwards and see what we got here. So over here we got an automatic brewing system, but it's actually specially built just to produce splash water bottles. It has a little bit of circuitry around here, but it, it doesn't work for any other type of potion, just splash water bottles. And then above that we have an item sorter, which is sorting out the gunpowder. Because to make splash water bottles, you need to have first some water bottles, and then you need to have some gunpowder, and you also need to have some blaze powder. So blaze powder can easily be gotten directly from a result of the blaze rods just being crafted down. So now we need to get the gunpowder as well as the water bottles. So that's what we got going on over here. We actually have two different inputs. So the powder comes from over here and the water bottles come from over here. But we actually automated those systems as well. So over here you can see we have a potion sorter. So it also sorts out water bottles. So if I put a water bottle over here in this slot, it's actually going to be placed into this brewing stand, just like right in here. And then it's automatically going to be pulled out by this hopper and put down into the chest and just keeps going down until it goes into this brewing system over here. That's a way you can sort out any type of potion as well as water bottles. So where do we actually get the water bottles as well as the gunpowder is through this nether portal here. So if we just go right through here and now we are over in the overworld and you see we got some farms set over here and this is getting us the gunpowder as well as the water bottles. So down here we have a creeper farm and this uses the spawning platforms that allow creepers to spawn in there since creepers are shorter than most mobs that spawn in the overworld they will be able to spawn underneath of these trap doors on this block here. So I place a creeper right here you can see that his hitbox is able to fit underneath this trap door and mobs are also able to spawn on top of tripwire and what happens is as soon as the creeper spawns there it activates a the tripwire which activates this tripwire hook and powers this piston which is a sticky piston with a trap door in it and that just pushes the mob over here and it just falls down onto this magma block. And the magma blocks eventually kill the creepers and then they'll drop their loots and we just have a hopper minecart which is going underneath, picking those loots up, coming over here, drop them off and then those are being dispensed as soon as they come into this dropper here and then they just get aligned and placed into this nether portal here which will take them over into the nether dimension. Now this is just a small setup, you can make this farm as large as you want. We also have some 1.5 tall blocks back here. This just prevents spiders from spawning on here. Since if there is a 3x3 area, the spider can spawn there. But since this block is a little bit higher, the game will see that the spider will collide with it and therefore it won't spawn it there. So you'll just get creepers from this farm. And stuff like skeletons and zombies are too tall to fit in here. And that is how we get the gunpowder. So the way that we actually get water bottles is from above. So the way this farm works is the farm is underneath really close to the water there and the player is just AFK way up in the air. So if I move way up here, this allows it so the player is AFK above the farm, high enough up so that the creepers are able to spawn, but no other mobs are able to spawn in the area. And that way we can concentrate the spawns inside of the farm. Up here is where the player will be AFK and we also built another farm here so the player can AFK the creeper farm but he's also going to be running this AFK farm. So this is a AFK fish farm and then you just kind of have to align yourself and aim kind of on the edge of that gold plate there and throw out your fishing rod and then when the bobber touches the pressure plate, it will slightly go downwards, which will allow your cursor to now be pointing at the note block, which is behind it. And then your guy is just going to be tuning that note block rather than trying to pull in the fishing rod once again. And then when a fish goes ahead and pulls down on the bobber, what's going to happen is the bobber is going to go underneath the pressure plate, allowing the pressure plate to go back up again. And therefore your player is no longer clicking on the note block, but then he's clicking on the pressure plate, which he then will reel in his fishing rod. And he will also collect whatever loot was caught by the fishing rod. Now there's a lot of different types of loot that you can get while AFK fishing. But the one loot that we are actually going after is the water bottles. So you can get glass bottles that are already full of water while AFK fishing and that's what this setup does here. It just goes ahead and 
if you get any of those, it will automatically sort them similar to the nether. And you pull out the water bottle on this side through this potion sorter. And then that will automatically send it into the nether using a dropper as well. Then any other loots that you get from AFK Fishing will just be put in this chest over here. So that way you can automatically get the gunpowder from the creepers, the water bottles from the AFK Fishing, and you can get the blaze powders from the blaze rods which come from the farm. So you can get all the materials you need to run this farm automatically. This makes it really nice to just come to your blaze farm AFK and then when you come back you'll have tons of XP's as well as blaze rods without having to worry about massive amounts of lag from holding tons of blazes while you're AFK. I really had a lot of fun designing this farm during our snapshot streams which are every Wednesday and Friday. A big thanks to everyone who came online and helped design this with me. We had so many people joining us as you can see, like Mimmo, Dino Block, Grandma Mommy, Joyer, El Gamer, Lima, Manrock, Random Games, Techman88, Time Bandit, Lapidare, A Squared Fax, Farmer Joe, Redstone Sam, Tom Lee, XL, and Xretta. And if you guys like to join the Snapshot server, you can do that when we are streaming. And I announce when I stream on YouTube, so make sure you turn on notifications as well as join the Protect Community Discord, and I also do it through my Twitter. So follow me there. And the way that we design something like this is by breaking it down into smaller parts and doing one piece at a time. So we might build this piece up here first and then we might just work on the clock piece. Then we might just work on the dispensing piece. Then we just work on the brewing system here. And after we get each individual piece working, then we start putting them all together. And once we put them all together, then we try to compact them down and make them kind of a little bit neater and then make sure that they all work together. And with so many people helping design this, it actually went fairly quick coming up with this farm here. And the initial farm is really simple. Now you don't really need to add any, any of this extra stuff here or in the overworld. And that will make it quite a bit simpler, but this is a nice way to get the water bottles. As it is kind of difficult to get water in the nether, and therefore you mostly want to brew them in the overworld. So in our situation here, we just chose a blaze spawner kind of in a random location, and the overworld just kind of gave us a ocean here, which is really nice, but you can put this in any biome. Just make sure the spawns occur inside of the creeper farm here, and you can make this as large as you want, so you can get more creeper spawns, Therefore you get more gunpowder. And if you don't want to AFK fish for your water bottles, you can go ahead and also use a witch farm. So if you happen to have a witch farm and you go into nether and there's a blaze spawner somewhat close by, you can attach the two together. And a witch farm is quite a bit better because you get gunpowder as well as you get glass bottles, which then you can automatically fill yourself. And then you can send both those ingredients over into the nether dimension and that can supply your blaze farm with tons of splash water bottles. So you have a lot of different options on how you can run this farm. Now there is some quirkiness to do with nether portals. What we were initially trying to do is send the gunpowder in like going one direction and send the water bottles in going a different direction. And therefore when you would come over into the nether side of it, you just have the gunpowder like on this side and then you just have like the water bottles on this side. And therefore you wouldn't have to sort them. Now it is possible to do that, but there's a quirkiness to do with portals depending on if there is blocks in front of nether portal on the opposite side at which the item goes through, like these blocks over here, you can actually switch which direction the items will end up on when they go through another portal. And this is a, a issue we had with the shulker shell shucker. So rather than trying to figure out exactly which way you have to turn the portal and where you have to put the blocks, you can just do a system like this where you just collect both gunpowder as well as the water bottles and sort them out afterwards. Now I want to show you guys the brewing system that we designed specifically for this farm. We made a little prototype of it over here. And that's what I like to do. I like to first go ahead and kind of design the individual parts separately and then put them all together. And what we have here is the brewing stand right there in the center. And then we have some inputs. So we got inputs from the side. So this input is just the blaze powder and that's used to make the brewing stand actually work. Back in 1.8, it's actually possible to have an infinitely automatic brewing system, meaning the thing can go on forever without any player input. That was because it didn't use blaze powder, which now the only way you get that is by having to craft it, meaning that you need a player to do that. But maybe someday they'll have like an automatic grinding system, which will automatically grind down like blaze rods into blaze powder, or maybe it'll automatically grind up like bones into bone mill. I think that would be a pretty cool block to have in the game without being too overpowered. And then on the other side, we also have another input, and this is the water bottles. And then from the top, we get the items which are being used to turn them into a splash potion, which is the gunpowder. So the gunpowder is actually being stored over here in this dropper. So the way that it works is as soon as this gunpowder in this apartment here gets used up, because it will go eventually 
down into this brewing stand. It will make this hopper empty and therefore we can detect that from this comparator. So the comparator will turn off and this will turn this torch on which goes up and then it will send a signal over here to this dropper to put in another gunpowder into this hopper over here. But before that happens, it does two other things. Signal goes over here through this torch here as well as through this repeater. And this repeater will allow it so that anything that is inside of the brewing stand will be able to get pulled out from this hopper here. So these water bottles will all be emptied out. And then this torch will turn on to make sure no new water bottles are put into the brewing stand until these have been completely removed. So I can show you this happening if I just drop this gunpowder. You can see it takes out all the water bottles that are splashed that are already done being brewed and it will put those in the chest below and then it will take in some new water bottles and then it will start to brew them up. And this is an automatic brewer so it'll do this all on its own. Notice that when it's already done you see it does it all over again. It'll just keep doing this as long as it has supplies. And then after we get working then we can pack that down into the size you see here. A couple things to point out about the farm. One of them is like the section here and how we have connected the walkway with the blazes sink that they are going to use up with the rest of the land mass that is around the farm. So when you build this, make sure there's just a walkway so they think they can get to the rest of the main land mass around their spawner here. And also if you are using glass like this, if there is glass with just air underneath of it, they won't think they can path find to the next block because they think they can fall. So make sure that there is some type block underneath that I think they can walk on. So we just put some solid blocks underneath of this or you can just use slabs. You wouldn't have to do two different blocks. Now the part of here puts off quite a bit of light and even small amounts of light can cause mobs to spawn slower from mob spawners. So we went ahead and just built this wall here as well as walled in. Now this farm will produce around 250 blaze rods per hour with a single mob spawner. If you have two of them, it's going to produce about 500 rods per hour. And this is without using looting. Now you can change the setup so that it will also work with looting. And the way you'd have to do that is have the player throw the potion. And then when the potion is in mid-air, you'd have to give the player a looting three sword. Then the player would have to put the looting three sword into an item frame. And that way his hand is free again so he can take in another water bottle. And we decided not to do that as this farm produces quite a few blaze rods already. You could just AFK this overnight and you'll have quite a bit in the morning. Now you could have a program where your player just sits there and automatically swings his sword. But you could also have a program just plays the game of Minecraft for you. So it's really cool to be able to do this without needing to have any other third party program. And it's really cool to see how automated you get the whole system made by having like a gunpowder farm as well as a water bottle farm. So you can convert water bottles into XP as well as blaze rods. Now over here is a switch to turn it on or off. You can turn this so that it'll only turn on if there is a player standing on that pressure plate. And that way it's not constantly shooting off water bottles and wasting them. And none of the pistons are moving or anything like that. Now if you want to, you can also put a on and off switch to the blaze farm itself by putting a lob in there. But it's not really necessary as when you're not running the farm, you won't be here and therefore blazes won't spawn. And if you do move in to the farm, then you'll just turn it on and you will be ready to have some blazes be automatically killed. Now when you are running the farm, you want to make sure that you're kind of aiming downwards and throw the bush in like here. That way you don't hurt any blazes that are in this killing chamber up here. Because the system is very precise and will make it so that each blaze will only be exactly one health. So with such a precise timing, it works very well. If you guys would like to look at this in more detail so you can build up in your very own world, I will provide the world download in the description as always. And that way if you have any problems you can always go check that world download because we know this one here will work. If you guys did enjoy this farm be sure to go ahead and show it with a like and share it with somebody that you think will also enjoy this farm. Maybe you know someone that needs a blaze farm. Go ahead and tell them about this farm. And if you guys haven't already be sure to go ahead and subscribe because I make tons of videos about farms similar to this one. So if you'd like to learn new things be sure to go ahead and do that. And as always, I'd love to thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.